In the past years, many pieces of evidence are emerging, proving the existence of ancient mythical continents, which were flourishing with life thousands of years ago. An example of this is the lost continent of Zealandia, 95% of which is now submerged in the ocean. The continent was around 5 million square kilometers, which is about two-thirds the size of Australia, and was located between New Zealand and New Caledonia. Scientists studied over 8,000 specimens and several hundred fossil species were identified, confirming the continent was once above sea level and filled with life. The lost continent we're focusing on in this video is the mythical continent of Lemuria, which was believed to be located in the Indian Ocean. The first time scientists started to talk about this land was during the mid-1800s when a British lawyer and zoologist, Philip Sclater, wrote a paper entitled The Mammals of Madagascar. Sclater found that lemur fossils were extremely abundant in Madagascar and India. But curiously, these fossils were entirely missing in Africa and the Middle East. This observation led Sclater to propose that during one point in the distant past, India and Madagascar were connected by land and were part of a broader continent he decided to name Lemuria. Many other scientists proposed the existence of such a continent as well. Etienne Jeffroy saint hilaire who is a French naturalist, also speculated about an ancient land connection between Madagascar and India in 1840. The British naturalist Alfred Wallace proposed in 1859 that only a sunken continent could explain the fauna found on the island of Celebes. In 1869, the German zoologist, naturalist, and marine biologist Ernst Haeckel, who discovered and named thousands of new species, mapped a genealogical tree relating all life forms and coined many terms in biology, published his book, The History of Creation. In it, he promoted his view on the theory of evolution and considered that the earliest humans might have descended from Asian primates and placed the cradle of humanity in Asia, Africa, and very interestingly, on a lost continent in the Indian Ocean. His theory was also accepted by the scientific community as this could explain the possible migration route of early humans from Africa to Indonesia. Ernst Haeckel even made the first hypothetical map of Lemuria, which he simply called Paradise. According to his map, the continent was a land bridge connecting Central East Africa all the way to the Philippines. This is what he wrote. The probable primeval home, or paradise, is here assumed to be Lemuria, a tropical continent at present lying below the level of the Indian Ocean, the former existence of which in the tertiary period seems very probable from numerous facts in animal and vegetable geography. But it is also very possible that the hypothetical cradle of the human race lay further to the east in Indostan or further India, or further to the west in Eastern Africa. The idea of Lemuria as a lost cradle of humankind wasn't discussed just by scientists, but also by esoteric societies. Helena Blavatsky was the late 19th century's most famous and notorious mystic occultist and medium. Born in Russia, she became renowned for her incredible psychic abilities, witnessed by many people. Among these abilities were clairvoyance, clairaudience, telepathy, the ability to access another's mind, and many others. Her psychic powers were so strong that she even solved murder cases, giving precise information of the crimes to the police. The information she gave to the police was so accurate that one time she even became a prime suspect in one of the cases until it was solved. In 1888, Helena Blavatsky published her book, The Secret Doctrine, in which she gives fascinating information about Lemuria. She proposes that Lemuria was the cradle of one of the seven races of humanity, 
She writes that millions of years ago, an ancient humanoid race coexisted with the dinosaurs. These beings supposedly possessed four arms and eyes and were egg-laying hermaphrodites. Curiously, this description is very similar to some of the ancient Hindu deities which were often depicted with four arms. Although Westerners don't believe in the ancient Sanskrit texts and regard them as mere bedtime stories, there is plenty of evidence which proves that some of the legends there, as crazy as they sound, are actually real. An example of this is one story about Lord Rama and his Venara humanoid monkey army, which according to the epic, Ramayana built a massive bridge between mainland India and Sri Lanka to rescue Lord Rama's wife, who was imprisoned there. Of course, no one except the Hindus even took this story seriously. Until many years later, satellite images taken by NASA revealed that what we see could in fact be a collapsed ancient bridge, now partially submerged under the ocean. The text from the Ramayana even described the building process in great detail. The process contained survey, planning, execution, and post-completion, all of which are fundamental parts of the process of every architecture, even today. There was even a chief engineer of the project called Nala, which is why the bridge is also known as Nala Setu, or the Bridge of Nala. The texts give details of all the materials used for the construction and all the types of trees which are first piled on the sea ridge to provide a pile foundation or wood cushion effect. On top of them, large and small stones were piled, and on top of the stones, a flat finished level was arranged. The Venara monkey people even held ropes on both sides of the bridge to build it in proper linear alignment, a technique used even today. The entire story was confirmed to be a truly historical event when Dr. Badri Narayanan, the former director of the Geological Survey of India, examined the structure and his team drilled 10 boreholes along the alignment of the bridge. What he discovered was startling. About six meters below the surface, he found a consistent layer of calcareous sandstone, corals, and boulder-like materials. It was obvious that the ancient bridge was man-made. Further investigations confirmed that the bridge was created around 7,000 years ago, the same period the Ramayana was written. According to the Ramayana, the ratio of the bridge was 10 to 1, length to width. Measured today, the bridge is about 35 kilometers or 21 miles long and 3.5 kilometers or 2.1 miles wide, the exact ratio of 10 to 1 as described in the epic. Scientists examining the bridge concluded that the stones used for the construction are older than the sand itself, confirming someone placed them there using advanced forms of engineering. Other scientists, while also agreeing that the bridge is man-made, believed it was built 1.7 million years ago, a time when modern humans didn't even exist. This is the time of the Homo erectus, who predate the Neanderthals. Could the humanoid monkey army of Rama be the early ancestors of man, precisely the Homo erectus? The Homo erectus could very well fit that description and although they don't have the intellectual capacity required to build anything, they had the physical strength to do it. And if there were ancient higher beings like Rama, could these beings guide the Homo erectus and use them for this construction? According to the legend, after the bridge was constructed, Lord Rama led his army through it and successfully defeated the captor of his wife and liberated her. On his way home, Rama flew with his Vimana, which according to the Sanskrit texts, is some kind of flying vehicle used by many of these blue-skinned beings and deities, a device that we today would call a UFO. If this megastructure from the Ramayana is real, could the stories of the flying ships called Vimanas and ancient races of giants mentioned there also be real? The ancient Tamil culture of South India 
is believed to predate both the Sumerian and Egyptian civilizations, and some even call it the first civilized human race. The Sangam literature, which is the earliest known literature of South India, tells the incredible story of an advanced Tamil civilization flourishing in the now submerged continent of Kumari Kandam thousands of years ago. Tamil people believe to this day the existence of this mythical lost continent and that it was their place of origin. This now sunken continent was situated in the Indian and the Pacific Ocean and was the connecting line between Africa and South India via Madagascar. The continent was submerged when the sea levels rose and the last ice age ended, forcing the Tamil people to migrate and mix with different groups, invariably forming new languages, races, and civilizations. A lot of people believe that not just the Tamil, but the whole of humanity is descended from the dwellers of Kumari Kandam. They believe the Tamil culture is the foundation of many enlightened cultures, and Tamil happens to be the mother language mix of a variety of other languages in the world. According to researchers, the Lemurian continent of Kumari Kandam was separated from the mainland sometime during the Mesozoic era because of the rising waters. Curiously, according to India's National Institute of Oceanography, sea levels were around 100 meters lower some 15,000 years ago. The rapid rise of the sea level resulted in a major flood, which eventually led to the disappearance of not only an entire continent, but an entire civilization that existed on Earth in the distant past. Professor Shanmugatas, a researcher in this area, said the following, one can imagine the strength and magnitude of the tidal wave required to devour a mountainous area that existed in the ancient coastal belt of the Tamil world. Could this flood be the biblical flood, which is mentioned by every culture on the globe? Another piece of evidence suggesting the existence of an ancient continent in the Indian Ocean was found in the tropical island of Mauritius. In 2013, Scientists discovered fragments of granite in the ocean south of India, along a shelf that extends hundreds of miles south of the country towards Mauritius. And on Mauritius, a team of geologists found zircon, which dated to 3 billion years ago, which is eons before the formation of the island itself, which only came into being 2 million years ago. This means that the zircon they discovered came from a much older landmass that sunk into the Indian Ocean. Instead of calling this lost continent Lemuria, the geologists named it Mauritia. Despite the different name, everything lines up perfectly with Sclater's theory of the lost continent of Lemuria and the Tamil legend of Kumari Kandam. With all these discoveries and ancient legends, we can agree that despite our technology and notion of history, we still know very little about Earth's past. Our planet is surrounded by mysteries, lost ancient civilizations, and advanced highly intelligent beings, which constructed fascinating marvels of architecture we still admire today. Every mystery we unravel opens more and more questions, which simply can't be answered with the knowledge we have from our history books. As Napoleon Bonaparte said, History is the version of past events that people have decided to agree upon. Thank you for watching. Before we end this video, we'd like to thank all of our Patreons for their support throughout this past year. This video is dedicated to all of you who are contributing to our work and helping us make more videos.